So here we are in uh, deepest Soho, the haunt of Hyde, and I'm here to present uh, 11K1's video to you on how to analyse a passage on Jekyll and Hyde, which is what you have to do in the uh, OCR exam, but it works um, whatever exam you're doing, uh, even if you're doing A-level, the techniques are exactly the same. Uh, firstly, start with uh, any way you like. It doesn't matter, my students learn the magic finger, Whatever language you hit upon will be exceptionally relevant and uh, will score you marks. What you'll notice uh, each time we make a comment, or my students make a comment, is that I keep asking them to refer it to Stevenson's viewpoint. Why is Stevenson doing this? Just check that I don't get run over. No mad Jekylls trying to trample me as a little girl. Excellent! Uh, yeah, why does Stevenson do this? And... Um, What's his wider purpose? You know, what uh, comment is he making about society at the time? And uh, my students will comment uh, intelligently and brilliantly about uh, religion, evolution, science, drug taking, because they're teenagers after all, and we all know that they're despicable people and they're going to ruin the future of the planet if we haven't ruined it already. Uh, look, there's that lovely graffiti just to prove my point. Well, I do hope you enjoy this marvellous video and happy revising. Uh, brilliant. Could somebody add to that? It's more than just an extreme description. Come on. You know you want to. Thanks. Go on. Because he's witnessed something that's extraordinary, it's shocked him so much that he's actually, he's almost dying. And so, because of that, all this, like, his flesh is dying, it's wouldn't work. Excellent. His flesh is actually dying. Um, how is it an ironic... Um, Description also of Hyde or Jekyll. Does that change in people? So their flesh would change? Brilliant. Yeah, so Jekyll's flesh falls away to become Hyde and so on. Can you tell uh, our scribe where to go? Brilliant, go for it. Um, sort of just suggests that because he's a doctor, he must have seen some pretty nasty stuff. What's learning? So the fact that it's scared him like it has, it must have been uh, uh, physical to, to the extreme. Excellent. Like, um, like a distortion of the body that slightly shocked him more than anything else he's seen in his career. Brilliant. Why do you think Stevenson's concentrating on this distortion of the mind in the novel? Jack and Hyde both got that. Both got what? So it's the mind that then is distorted first, then the body. The word visibly after his flesh had fallen away, just visibly. Okay, what are you going to tell us about that? Uh, it shows that the appearance of Hyde to Jekyll is different as well as mentally. It's now physical as well. Except um, this is Lanyon who's being described. Oh. Yeah, because he's seen the transformation of Hyde into Jekyll. Uh, why has it made him visibly balder in only like two weeks? Why is he losing so much hair? It's the stress. It's the stress. I think it's like implying that what's happened to Jekyll could be contagious because Ooh. Um, Jekyll's appearance changes when he turns into Hyde. Yes. And now Lanyon's appearance is changing. So it's not. He's not lit it's not literally contagious. He's not yeah. changing into another person, but it's similar. Yeah. Why is Stevenson doing that? Anyone want to help us out? What's he trying to help his readers think or feel or Is it exaggerating the danger of drugs? Ah, go. Link it to drug use for us. Well, if other people see people taking drugs, they can sometimes think that they want to do it too. Right. And so this is happening to Lanyon even though he's not taking drugs. That's how powerful the effect of drug taking is. Yeah. Okay. I can accept that. Works as a metaphor, doesn't it? 
Yes, he thought, he's a doctor, he must know his own state, and that his days are counted, and the knowledge is more than he can bear. Um, so, tell me something about that. Well, it's just like what James said, that he's a doctor, he's only now he knows that what he sees is going to change. So it kind of exaggerates how the change between Jeff and I is influenced. But, but that's really weird, isn't it? If you're a doctor and you just see something, and then you start to decline and move towards death, wouldn't you say, hang on, this is stupid, that's, that's not scientific, people don't die this way. Put yourself together, Mr Lanyon. Yeah, why doesn't he do that to himself? Why does he just say, oh well, I'm just going to die? There's another like, quote that links to what Tori just said. Okay. Um, that says he had his death warrant written to be a face. Yes. You're absolutely right. But my question is, as a doctor, shouldn't he be able to say, hang on, this is all psychological, I, I should be able to rise above this? Yeah, that's the whole point about something being psychologically part. Uh, you have something to add? Kind of that, and also it's something that he hasn't seen before, it's completely new, so he doesn't know what effect has happened to his body, so he can't really tell himself that everything's going to be okay because he doesn't know what it's going to be. Brilliant. So what's Stevenson saying about science or medicine at the time? It's uncontrollable. It's uncontrollable. Excellent. Um, and what will the effect be? Yes. We're moving towards death. Go for it. Um, but it's sort of like, it's not even that he's accepted he's going to die, it's that he wants to die. Ah, he's go on. He's not saying like, oh, I could help myself. Yes. He's saying I'm going to die. So why does he actually choose to die? Why is it better for him to die? Um, I don't know, it's probably just what he's seen has disturbed him so much he'd rather die than live with the memory. Excellent. Could it be that because he's a doctor but he can't explain it, it's quite embarrassing to him or that he can't explain what's happened? So he feels like... So, so he's dying from embarrassment? Does Stevenson want us to sympathise with him or think he's an idiot? Which way is Stevenson pushing us? I don't know the answer. Yes? Maybe because he needs to learn from his mistakes. Like we know that he wanted to be a better scientist than um, Jekyll. Yes. And this could be basically him saying that he's not, he's not better and him kind of accepting it. Like he doesn't want to move on. To so so he's... What, happen, what will happen to him is what happens to Jekyll. So are you saying he's dying just because of professional vanity? He's always thought he's better than Jekyll, but now he knows he's yeah, not. It could be an aspect, I don't know. I don't know. Do I? That's why I asked. <laughs> yes? It shows he's kind of defeatist. He can't, like, try to, like, kill himself. He's just saying that he's going to die. Like, yes. Yeah. So we're critical of him, in your yeah, view. Um, however... Hyde also kills himself, which is the same as Jekyll killing himself, and Lanyon kills himself. What's Stevenson getting at by having all the medical men commit suicide? I've never thought of that before. Any offers? And we're back, live on the 11K1 show. Um, right, so my question was, why does he get all these medical men to commit suicide? Any offers? Thank you! And um, he could be saying that they're like really greedy to gain that knowledge. Like Lanyon was greedy, like he wanted to see what Hyde was doing. Yes. The potion, and he like, even though he knew it was against his better judgment. And then, um, yeah, and Jekyll was greedy with like his knowledge and why he like created a drug. So yeah, it's kind of saying that if you're like really greedy with knowledge, it's going to turn out badly. So in the end, the problem with science is that it's relentlessly curious. And it's the curiosity that damages them. Yeah. Curiosity kills the cat. Uh, could somebody contrast that to me with religious faith? How is religious faith different? Yeah. The, the, uh, the way that they're all scientists, they, like, how they go against religion, that kind of kills them. Yes. 
So, are we looking at Stevenson then, putting forward a Christian point of view here? Okay, I like it. Right, so by an amazing coincidence, um, we've leaped straight into curiosity here. What, um, remind me what chapter this was so I can stick it on the video? Dr. Lanyon's narrative, okay. Uh, somebody tell us something about why this curiosity stuff is here. This is where um, Hyde transforms into Jekyll, or he's just about to, and Lanyon's going to see it. Uh, why is Stevenson highlighting the word curiosity in this passage? Doctors are always curious, so it was Jekyll's curiosity that led to him making the drug. Yes. And then Lanyon's curiosity to led, that led to him seeing the transformation from Hyde to Jekyll. And that's what's killed them both? Yeah. Excellent. Anyone got anything different? Yes. I, so they're curious because they want to like, get to know like, the thing rather than a description of them because they can't really decide to describe them. Ah, so he's linking curiosity um, to a different word of curiosity, someone who is a figure of fun. So the first highlighted curiosity is, is a kind of disability. Um, another way that he shows that curiosity will damage you yeah, because Hyde is a curiosity as well as Lanyon being curious. Uh, so he's linking those two meanings of the word to suggest that curiosity is a terrible thing. Um, which is puzzling to me because when I read the novel I thought he was actually um, in favour of Darwin's theory of evolution. And Hyde was a way of showing that evolution was true. So how can we put that together? Thank you. Well, I was just saying, after that curiosity it says as to his origin, the link to the origin of species. Good. Uh, so, what is Stevenson saying about the origin of species? Um, well, perhaps it comes from the wrong places because he's using it out of sort of. It's like curiosity of disgust. So, maybe it comes from the wrong places. What does the evolution yeah, or the curiosity? So, we've evolved from the wrong things? Yeah. So, in that version, Stevenson believes that Darwin's right, but that he's uncovered a really horrible truth that we're evolved from apes. Is that where you're going? Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? So he's not attacking science's truth, but he's saying the truth is just too horrible for us. We discovered we're just descended from apes, that's the way it went. And uh, he's discovering the beast within. I'm not looking at anyone in particular. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so he's discovered the beast within, and that's what, that's what damages us. Um, how is the drug taking linked to the beast within? Well, when you take drugs, it's like to relax you, and maybe being relaxed makes your beast within now. Can you tell me why? Why does relaxing help the beast or the evil within surface? Great. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, in fact, many artists about 80 years before did take drugs. So Coleridge, incredibly famous poet of the Victorian period, took drugs precisely for that reason, to open up his mind and uh, you know, allow himself to be more creative. And so that's exactly what Sabrina's talking about, and Stevenson's arguing against it. Um, in the 60s, it, was all, it became... Another popular idea, many writers decided that that's the way to write, take drugs, and, um, and then you'll be able to write interesting <coughs> works. Um, and then, of course, it killed them. So there you go.